Hey everyone, in this week we'll learn various high poly techniques to tackle the leg portion of the model. By the end of the week, have a complete design for the leg. The homework assignment will focus on a final high poly design for a small portion of your robot. Hey everyone, welcome back. So I wanted to start off in this session by recapping where we were um, in the last few videos before we jump forward to what we're going to actually tackle for the next couple of videos. So in the last sessions together, we worked on generating our idea for our robot, uh, gathering reference and then building out our block out. So this was where we were at in the last couple of sessions. And so in the next few videos, I wanna basically go over how to turn that block out into a more finalized robot. This is what we have as our more finalized asset here. Um, this definitely took a lot of hours. So in the videos, we're gonna try and capture the main parts of that. I'm probably gonna work on the legs and the, the head section, um, but a lot of the techniques that we use are gonna be transferable to the other parts of the model as well. So uh, that's what we're gonna capture in the upcoming videos. Hey everyone. So in this session, I wanted to start by just talking about some tweaks that I wanted to make to the block out that we created in our past session. So uh, one of the, th the things I mentioned in some of the videos before was that the scale of our asset, I, I modeled it based on real world scale, but as we start to actually add things like bevels and more detail, it's gonna be a little bit harder to actually work with. So the first thing I wanna do to our block out is start by scaling it up. So um, I've actually already scaled this, but I'll show you the process for scaling up the asset. It's really straightforward. Um, usually what I'll do is I'll add an empty. So I'll come into here and we'll add an axis empty here. We can just put that at the origin um, here as well. And then I'll move that into the folder of everything I wanna scale up. So we have um, these legs and the body and everything. All you'd wanna do is just come and select everything that you have here, hold shift and just parent it to the empty. So now as we scale, the empty, we can scale this up. Um, I actually scaled this for a factor of um, eight times the original scale. So it was something down like this before, and I scaled him up to be eight times the scale basically. So that's how I scaled it. And the other thing to also take note of as well is that because these are instances of the legs, you'll also need to come and scale the individual working sections. So for uh, the the femur and for the tibia and everything, I also scaled these guys up as well because they're, they're going to get proportionally larger as well. So um, hopefully that, that helps. Um, that was the first adjustment I made to the block out. The next adjustment I wanted to make was to the proportions and size and shape language of our beetle. So when I was actually blocking this out uh, for real, when I was making the model, um, I was using the Hercules beetle as my main reference for uh, the actual block out and the shapes and everything, the, the sort of um, the limbs and the size of the horns and all these kind of things. And I was also basing it upon the beetle models that I had I got from the Sketchfab plugin and trying to use the proportions to match the beetle. But what I noticed was that I actually didn't want the silhouette to be super realistic. I wanted to play with the proportions and the scale a little bit. And one of the um, key references to sort of figuring that out was a model that I found this was a scale model of a beetle and you can see here that in this particular example uh, the proportions are definitely exaggerated a lot so you can see that we have this really large horn shape the body is definitely more rounded and smaller um, and you almost can't even see the limbs or the legs in there they're kind of tucked in and this gave me the feeling that I, I wanted to get across from um, my art Bible where I wanted it to feel like it could transform into this more simple primitive shape. So this was kind of key to thinking about the proportions and the shape. And then um, an, uh, one thing that I always sort of refer back to is I had this um, website that I used a while back, which is about how to make things feel more cute. Um, it's a really nice little website, uh, science-based website. So if you click on the hammer, this is a really good example. Um, by playing with the sliders, you can effectively adjust how cute the object feels. And so in this case, we can see that as we adjust the length of the hammer, so we're playing with the proportions and making things feel more stylistic. And then as we round things out as well, 
the hammer goes from being sharp and angled and um, a, a tool effectively that you would use to um, sort of, you know, knock uh, nails into a wall to being much more like a toy type um, device, right? So you can see that as we adjust the sliders, how that has an impact on uh, the, the sort of feeling you have towards this hammer, which is definitely interesting. And then you can also do the same with a person. I'll do the cat one just as a, another example. So this one, you can do the same thing. So this one is useful because we're focusing on animals, right? So as you adjust the size of the eyes, that definitely has more of a cuter feel. The bigger the eyes get, the more cuter it feels generally. Um, same with the limbs. As we ex If we keep the limbs at the actual proportions, then it would resemble the shape of a cat. But as we start to make them smaller, definitely feels cuter. Um, if we make them longer, that can kind of exaggerate the proportions in some way. So certain things like the ears being bigger, as an example, definitely helps make it feel more cute. And as you adjust the body size as well, you can see that that instantly makes it feel a lot more cute, which is bringing that same message that we see here in these examples. So from that, I then basically took um, some more reference um, gathering just to see what I could find that would help me to get that message across. So here's some examples of beetles where some of these are models, some of them are just concepts and that kind of side of things. Some of them are references. Um, and a lot of this is just about the proportions and the sizes of things. So one of the things I noticed was that having a smaller, more rounded body and then a bigger head with a larger horn was something that definitely made it feel more cute. Um, and then having the limbs at a, a smaller scale. So the limbs not exceeding the extent of the body and, and things like that definitely help to make it feel more cute. So one of the things I did here, just this is an example of where the block out is a little bit more further along in this case, is um, I actually changed the proportion. So you can see here that um, I've actually rounded out the body a lot more. I've made the horn bigger and tucked that in and the head as well. Um, we've made the eyes as, as, as kind of as big as I could get them. I could also kind of exaggerate them more, um, but I had sort of wanting to still keep it fairly realistic. And so with our existing example um, that we have here, you can see that um, the, the proportions and things are definitely more, uh, they're not as rounded. So one of the things I definitely would advise doing if, if you wanted to go in this direction, this is obviously a personal choice, is I um, added in primitive shapes like uh, a, a sphere and everything here to kind of get those proportions. And then if you set this to um, under the viewport display for your object, you can set this to be a wire view. Then you can use that as a guide to try to get the proportions. So one of the things you can see I tried to do was basically adjust this to fit within a sphere type shape. I wanted it to feel like it was um, spherical like the references that I that I had there. So you can do that really easily by just using things like lattices just to adjust the proportions. So, um, okay, so let me hide this guy. And then if I turn on this, it's really straightforward. You select the object you wanna um, actually adjust and then you can just add a lattice modifier and I'm using hard ops to do that. And then from here, um, you can just press Q to add more divisions to your um, lattice here. And then you can start to manipulate the proportions to make it feel more stylistic. So you can see that this is kind of one of the things I was doing. And then I would also look at that. So let's move the sphere as well into the top view. I'd also look at that from the top view as well and see if I can try to get the same feeling when I'm doing it from this view as well. So we can start to exaggerate the proportions and make it feel more stylized. Um, same with the head, we would come in here, we'll add the um, uh, lattice in again and you can do exactly the same thing. So we'll just uh, do a thing here and then we're just gonna adjust like some of these proportions. And then I'm just gonna come in with this guy. So we can just start to get the feeling of um can pull the head in out a little bit there as well yeah and then for the horn as well i would definitely look at i rotated the horn so it kind of stuck more into the body and then i was using i think i mentioned before in the previous um tutorial that i would use the 
uh, la the soft select to affect that. So you can just scale up the um, sphere to show the influence and then use that to kind of bend in the horn more. So it's more tucked in um, and exaggerated. So we've got, that's just a really quick example of how you can edit these guys just to sort of get that feeling across. Um, and we can turn, you know, the lattice off to show sort of before and after. It's obviously a lot flatter and now it's becoming a lot more rounded. So you'd want to do a pass on that type of stuff to get your proportions where they are. And then this version here that we were just showing, uh, once I got the proportions, uh, I have a, in this one, I have a little bit more detail figured out and we'll go into this in a little bit more in the class as to um, how I added ex these extra sections to the model and everything. But um, you can see that the proportions there are definitely more rounded. The final adjustment I also like to make at this stage for the block out is adding in materials for the scene as well. So as I'm starting to think about uh, what I'm making and I have my references as well, um, I'm thinking about I'm going to turn this beetle from a real world uh, beetle into a uh, mech or robot beetle, right? And I want to start thinking about how that translates to real world materials. So you can see here that the beetle has really nice coloring. I wanted to stick with this yellow and black color theme because I think it's just a really nice contrast. Um, so when I was thinking about this, I was uh, thinking, well, I've, my main colors here are the yellow of the shell and the black of the beetle. And this kind of varies as well, depending on the beetle. You can see sometimes you get more yellow on the head if it's a female or a male. And then it sort of varies up depending on the beetle that you look at, right? So in terms of adding materials, it's really basic. I'll just jump over into our actual block out to show how I would adjust that. So you just add a new material. If I wanted to do a black plastic, then I would probably just um, add a value in there for the black and then change up the roughness and make it um, whatever sort of value I want it to be. Generally, um, I'll work with slightly um, shinier roughness so I can actually adjust um, or see my model in a bit more of uh, the smoothing and the normals and everything there. And then um, same for the other materials. So for the yellow, I would make a yellow plastic. And then I'll do the same. I would add um, the color in there and then change up the roughness and everything. Um, I also like to, uh, when I'm doing stuff like this, I also like to add some metals and things in there um, because I know for the final model, what I had done here was I have some sections where I've got the yellow sort of painted area and then I've got um, smaller sort of either bronzy brass materials or darker metals in there as well. So mixing in just to give us material variation. Um, so that's the type of stuff I like to add in as well. So I would do the same kind of thing. I would add in a new material uh, for the metals. It's straightforward. So let's say we were making um, a bronze metal. You're just going to set it to be metallic and then choose your color. So we can come in with more of a bronzy type metal and then we can tweak our roughness as well. So something along the lines of this kind of stuff, just get some basic materials in there. And then once you start working, you can assign those to the different areas. Before getting started on some of the high poly techniques, I also just wanted to give a shout out to a couple of um, really great artists that have helped me with some of the tutorials and uh, learnings here. So. Uh, the first artist is Alex. Um, I think his name is Alex Senechow. I don't know if I'm butchering his uh, second name there, but um, he's got some really great work. So definitely check out his art station. Um, and he has an amazing tutorial, which is um, Visual Design Basics. So definitely worth checking this tutorial out. I would highly recommend it. It's a really great tutorial um, for high poly design work. And then the other artist um, is Ben Bolton. Again, really like his work. He's got a YouTube channel with a bunch of um, modeling and, and different things there as well. And then in his um, blogs, he gives some advice about uh, modeling, um, designing um, different products and things like that. So I definitely would recommend reading through some of these. They're really helpful. One of the ones I wanted to just point out, which I've, I found personally very helpful for high poly detailing is um, he has a workflow for how to add detail and it focuses on going from larger shapes down to more of the tertiary style details and smaller details. And so this is a, a great blog, it's definitely worth reading. Um, but one of the things that I found really helpful about this was how he breaks down 
Um, he's always looking at the silhouette from different angles when he first starts things out, tries to break it up and make it interesting. Um, and then he's uh, breaking things into parts, like breaking stuff into individual chunks, working on the different surfaces and the details and tweaking the edges and everything, and then adding smaller details such as screws and bolts and um, rivets and that type of stuff. So that's the process and it's a similar process to what I followed when I was working on my own high poly stuff, trying to keep the shape simple to begin with and then adding detail over time. So I thought that was just worth calling out. Again, shout out to both of those artists because they're really helpful in terms of the tutorials and uh, learning there for sure. Okay, so now we've uh, got some of the adjustments made to our block out and the tweaks that we would make at this stage. I wanted to um, show the main part of the assignment that we're going to be working on for this particular session. So uh, we're going to be working on the high poly or more detailed mesh for our leg. And this is what the end result actually looks like. This is the different portions um, of the leg. So this is how it would look assembled as a final leg without any, um, I've not rotated any of the elements and everything, but you can see these are parented to each other um, in the same way they were before. So we can just make adjustments and see how the leg is working and how it's rotating and everything. And this is in our, in our actual, in the final result here, I actually have this set up um, in the same way. So these are individual collections with the leg pieces uh, contained within them. So this is the femur. Uh, we have our tibia section here and then we have our foot. So we'll probably work on the foot portion first, but I want to also show some of the techniques I actually used when I was modeling this stuff. So we're gonna break those down um, first and then we'll actually be uh, working towards our final uh, meshes here. So now I'm gonna talk about some of the techniques I used to actually approach the modeling for this particular prop. And so I'm gonna split this into two categories. One is going to be the techniques I actually use when I'm modeling the shapes and, and tweaking the design and everything. And then the other um, technique is how do I approach designing shapes I'm not sure about? So if I'm struggling with a particular shape, what types of techniques do I use to actually figure out my design or figure out my shape? So we'll start with the modeling to begin with, the techniques for actually modeling. And we're gonna use this example of the foot here and how we actually take this block out into more detailed areas. And then we'll probably show some actual progress of this as well. But um, yeah, so we'll start off with this and then we'll move on to the actual design. How do we design shapes as well? So the first technique we're gonna show is a bit of an extension on our box modeling and subdiv workflow that we showed when we blocked out the asset. So um, for this, it's essentially just detailing up the asset more. So you can see here that we started with real kind of basic primitive shapes. So if I wanted to start detailing this up, I would start to add more loop cuts to this you know, subdivide it a little bit more, maybe adding some bevels into here to sort of smooth out the shapes and tweaking the geometry until I get um, roughly the shapes that I can see here. So that's uh, the sort of first technique that I would use to sort of start to detail things. And then I also would use that in combination with um, bevel modifiers and subdivision workflow. So in this case, you know, I can add the subdivision to create the nice smooth shapes that I want, and then I can tweak uh, my crease sets to get um, the form. So if I want to round this out a little bit more, I'm going to be using uh, reducing the crease sets. And you can see that we can start to get um, this shape and this form that we see in here. So just tweaking the creases. Um, so that would be the first uh, technique is um, going with the subdiv workflow. Um, so for this particular shape that you can see in here, that's the approach that I would follow. And then in here, um, the next technique I would use is uh, the same the same process, except I'm gonna rely less on the subdivision uh, workflow and more on a bevel workflow. So here I'm just adding a bevel modifier to the shape. And most of the time um, I wanna smooth uh, this particular bevel based on the bevel itself. So we have this kind of result, something along the lines of this, and then we can tweak our shape. So here I can, you know, chamfer out some of these. Let's just um, sort of tweak the edges a little bit here. So you can see as the end, as it comes towards um, the end here, it's going to um, struggle with the shape of the bevel. So we're just gonna thicken this out a little bit here and you can see that we can create that nice result. So I'm just coming in and tweaking this so you can get the sizing and everything right. So if, you, if the bevels are too large, they're effectively overshoot like this. So you can just kind of tweak the size of it to clean it up and fix it there. So 
this would be how I would approach that. You can see in this example, I actually um, have quite a small bevel and then I um, actually chamfer this edge. So we could do something similar. If we come into this guy, we'll just chamfer this out to create that nice smoothed result. And then now that we have added the bevel back in, we need to tweak the size of our bevel a little bit here. So we're just gonna punch those numbers in. So this would be another technique that I would commonly use is actually just hand modeling stuff with the bevel modifier. You can also start to add subdivision over the top of this to smooth it out even further. So you can see that we can get that result um, just by adding a subdiv on top. So those are two of the more common techniques that I would use when it comes to approaching more of a box modeling and um, with the, with the uh, bevel modifier or just using subdivision increases. Okay, so the next technique I wanted to show here is a Boolean workflow. So we've got our shapes here. You can see that in the actual design that I created, um, I have separate sections where I'm uh, actually detailing different parts with different materials. We're separating them out, but it's keeping the shape. And the way that I approach that is using Booleans. So there's a couple of different ways to approach Booleans. You can um, simply start by just adding in meshes. So if we come in and just add in a cube in here, we can use this to basically cut away our geometry. So there's a couple of ways to do that. You can either do that through hard ops itself and just do a difference Boolean. You'll see that it will um, cut away the shapes or you can also use shortcuts. Um, so if I press control plus, uh, this is gonna do a union style Boolean. Um, control minus will do a difference and then control um, slash will do a slash Boolean. And so, uh, that's uh, one way to approach approach it. And then once you've done this, if we um, just set this up and do a slash Boolean, you'll see that this has effectively separated these into different chunks controlled by the Boolean. Um, I can then take this Boolean here and add geometry to this. So we can start cutting into this and modeling into this. And you'll see that we have that section that's sort of similar to what we have here. So just by manipulating the shapes here and deforming everything, we can get a nice uh, transition. One thing you might also want to do with this is um, the, the good thing about uh, working in this way with hard ops is that it will sort it into this uh, cutters collection so you can easily hide and unhide things and if you want to recall the cutter you can just uh, recall it this way. So that's pretty handy. I like to work in that particular way and then I'll also in this case where the shapes are the same I would instance one from the other. So we'll just link the data together. So what we can now do is as we manipulate our shape, you can see that it's adjusting for both of these at the same time. Um, but I might wanna change the material of this one. And to do that, uh, I would come over to this little drop down here where it says link, and I would set that to object, which now allows me to override the material, but still keeping this as an instance. So. That's a pretty handy tip when you're starting to detail up different sections. So definitely advise working in that way. Another um, way to do the Boolean approach, and we'll just duplicate this guy off so we can show this, is to use box cutter. Um, so we just press Alt W to switch to box cutter here, and then we can just come in um, with a uh, cutter and actually cut in the shape. So this is actually doing a line box. So let me switch this over to uh, from the line box to a regular box here. So we'll just click this guy here. And then now I can just basically cut out my Boolean shape. If I'm doing that from an orthographic view, it's gonna cut all the way through. Um, or I can also uh, just cut in 3D as well. So we can um, just draw out our box and use that to slice away the shapes. And then again, this will work in the same way. So we can just recall our cutters and start um, using that, manipulating those. So th this is the, the basics of the Boolean workflow. And then once I've got this all set up, then I can start to edit and manipulate my Booleans here. Sometimes I'll also just run a smooth on this as well. So it uh, keeps a nice uh, smoothing groups and everything as well. The final technique I wanted to showcase here for modeling approach is once we've um, approached things with a uh, Boolean style workflow, you can see if we jump over to this example that we have nice smoothing and edges uh, bevels between these shapes. And so one of the ways that I can approach that is to remesh using the techniques that we um, covered in the block out portion. So in this case, 
I'd actually use the remesher, quad remesher to do that. And there's a couple of ways you can approach this. So if you want it to stay symmetrical, you can use the symmetry um, that you have here. And then we also have these controls, which we didn't cover in the block out portion. Um, but essentially what this will do is it will remesh the object uh, based off of things like the hard edges based on an angle. It can also do it based on normals or materials as well. So if you had cut things out with different materials in there, you can use that to control the topology. So what I would do in this case is usually from an organization perspective is I would move things that are temporary geometry into just a reference folder. So if I just do that here and then I run the remesher on this, we should get a new meshed version of our topology here, which is going to hide the previous one. And we can just use this to basically test our results. So this is what it's looking like when I don't select any of those objects. You can see what it's doing with the topology there. It's not particularly clean on some of the edges. So if we jump back over to this previous example that we were just looking at here um, and we run this again, but we're going to turn on um, the normal splitting or maybe the hard edge splitting as well. And then now this will run that with a much cleaner result on those edges. You can see the result that that's giving us. And then if we were to just add a smooth a subdivision to this, this is going to smooth out the geometry there. Um, it will also add hard edges and things into this as it creates them. So you can just uh, clear the sharp edges on that and you'll get a nice smooth result on this. So that can be pretty good. With quad remesher for this particular workflow, you usually need to have a lot of topology. Otherwise, you won't get particularly smooth results. So just to sort of demonstrate that, we can turn down some of the subdivision on this one and run the remesh. What you'll notice is that as we try to smooth this, it's not always going to give particularly nice smooth results um, with that workflow. So you can see some issues here with the smoothing um, as well. So if we delete that and just come back to our uh, previous result, we'll just unhide uh, the cube that we had there. So now if we were to increase our divisions on our object and keep this nice and smooth, when we run our retopo over the top, we're going to get a really smooth result. So that's going to give us um, nice smoothing on all of these areas. So that's just a couple of little tips when it comes to this particular type of workflow. So usually I just like to keep myself nice and organized and I'll work in this way where I have the um, geometry that I've run the um, quad remesher on and then I'll have my reference geo hidden. So if I, what's good about this workflow is this is quite a nice way just to preview how the high poly is going to look or the final mesh will look. And then when I come to doing our low poly geo um, or lower density geometry for the final uh, mesh, then I can actually come back to these and tidy these up manually and actually weld up the geometry and make um, a nicer um, topology there. So that will be covered obviously once we get more into um, remeshing and making our low poly nanite geo for game mesh. But in this case, uh, this is a nice way just to preview the result and see uh, how these different things are interacting there. So um, yeah, hopefully that showcases that technique. So now I wanted to show uh, some of my workflows for actually designing shapes that I'm not 100% sure about. So as I went through this model and I was starting to design different areas of it, um, I was looking at the references for, say, things like the legs and trying to figure out how I could actually translate that from something organic on the actual beetle to a more hard surface design. And so I was often starting with the basic shape that we see. So if we look at um, the leg here, you can see that the, the foot's very, very obvious because it's broken into these segmented pieces. So that's kind of easy to translate into hard surface chunks. And then we have the femur and the tibia. And those areas are a little bit more loose in terms of what they are. They've got this section here has a bunch of spikes on the end of it. And then you can sort of see how it connects up to uh, the knee joint there. And then these, this section here uh, for the femur, we can see that um, it's a bigger sort of larger block. So I wanted to figure out how to actually translate those into some sort of hard surface design. So there's a couple of techniques I used for that. And this is a section of the femur. This is the final high poly that I created here. 
And I'm just going to show a couple of techniques of how I do that. So the first one is actually using a um, technique in Blender called Metaballs. This is the shape that I actually generated using the Metaballs. And you can see how that relates very closely to our final design and final shape. So, so let's go over how we create Metaballs and use them to design our shapes um, here for the robot. So the first thing we're going to do is press Shift A to add a Metaball. And you can choose from the different primitives. Uh, don't worry about the one you select because you can always change this out later, but we'll select the ball for now. It's going to come in pretty large, so we're going to move that to the origin and just scale that down so we have something to work with. And so this reacts like clay. So as we uh, tab into edit mode here, uh, we can press Shift A to add another meta ball. We'll add a, um, a ball again. It's going to move it uh, to where the 3D cursor is. So we can move our 3D cursor back to the center here. And you'll see that as we move this around, it's... Um, deforming and, and sort of combining together like two pieces of clay. So we can use that to create really organic shapes. We can scale the meta balls up and we can move them and rotate them around and position them. And then if we bring the um, properties up here, you can change the options here. So uh, we can select the different elements and it will highlight which one as we select it and we can change our shape. Depending on the shape that we select, we have different options. So with the ball, we just have the basic options for stiffness and radius. Um, so we can play around with these um, options to change the size and things like that. And then we can also swap it for different ones. And depending on the object, we'll have different controls. So you can see here for the capsule, we can make our capsule larger. If we select, say, the cube, we can change X and Y values and the overall size of our object there. And then as well as that, um, we can also uh, use this negative to subtract away from the shape. So this is going to cut away our shapes. At the moment, you can see the resolution of this is pretty low. So to uh, increase that, you need to drop this number. And I usually find uh, 0.1 is pretty good. You can see the topology that we're using with this one. Um, and then 0.5 is also a little bit more dense. So uh, we can come in there. And then I tend to find um, when working with this, what works quite nicely is to uh, turn off the negative so you can see the shape that you're going to be combining with and then set it to negative so you can see um, the result as you work there. So to build up the shape that we have here, we would just keep adding in different ones. So we could start maybe with the capsule um, and we'll just rotate this so we can get sort of 90 degree rotation there and then just move this um, into position. I'll just scale him up a little bit. And I tend to find playing with the radius is better than using the scale, depending on what you're trying to do here. So you can build up the shapes. Uh, we can shift E to duplicate, and we'll just scale our radius of this a little bit. So we can start to create these types of shapes. And if we wanted to cut out our form there, let's try and select this into being a more of a cube shape. And then I'm going to scale this down and with the cube the larger the radius the more rounded out this gets so as we bring this down in scale you can see that it's becoming a sharper cube and we can use that to negatively impact and cut away our shape here so um, nice and easy and then we can play around with our stiffness control if we wanted to say smooth this out or sharpen up the result um, you can sort of see how that's giving us a different look there. And then as we sort of combine these together, you can move another one and then maybe look at rotating that to get the particular look that you want. So it's really nice because it's like deforming the shapes almost using um, clay and playing around with the different scales and things here. You can um, definitely get the look that you're after. So um, just experimenting with that. And if you want to add form and volume, um, you can always add in new shapes and then just start to uh, scale those up and that's going to impact the overall volume. So you can definitely play around with these. Um, and because this is all dynamic, it's very easy to get those organic designs that you're after using the meta balls. You can also apply uh, materials to these as well. So you just um, change the material over here. We can choose, um, let's do our plastic here. And then you can visualize how it's going to look when you're finished. And then once you're done with this, um, you can just convert this into um, geometry. So usually um, I would just press F3 to search and do convert to mesh. And then this is going to turn it into a mesh that we can now edit and work with. So for sculpting, um, usually what I would do was get some basic geometry 
um, and then I would actually just draw my design directly in 3D on top of the model. So this is a, I just wanted to show this example of the sculpt. It's really, really rough, but it gets the idea across of what I wanted to do for um, a portion of the head here. So you can see uh, roughly what this was looking like and I can just draw things in. So to approach that, it's really straightforward. We'll take this uh, leg piece again. Um, so if you have any subdivision or anything, you'd want to collapse that down. So you just press Control A to collapse it. And then you can come into sculpt mode and you have a few options to play with when it comes to the topology. You can either do a remesh and for something like this, you need a pretty low value to get a good retopology for that. You can see that's what it looks like when we remesh. I think this one was done with remesh. You can see that there. And then you can start to just manipulate uh, the geometry with your sculpt. So I like to use, if I'm trying to push and pull forms out, I'll use the draw brush. This is pretty nice for um, just adding volume or taking away volume. Um, I'll press G, uh, G to use the grab brush. This is like the move brush if you're used to Z brush so you can, again, manipulate the geometry there. And then if I want to um, sculpt away, I'll sometimes use things like the great brush does something very similar, more like a trim brush. This is pretty useful as well. Um, so we can actually sculpt away our edges. And then if I wanted to draw lines in like this, I would use the crease brush um, so we can sort of draw in lines. You can see um, one of the things is you can overdrive the intensity. So by default, it won't be that strong. Um, I've also enabled the stabilized stroke here. So if I just turn that off, you can see I can draw the design. So if we're doing things like panel lines or if you wanted to slice stuff up, this is pretty good. If you need um, symmetry as well, you can turn on um, the symmetry here so you can see that we've got um, symmetrical uh, sculpting there as well. Um, if you wanted a lazy mouse type approach like we have in ZBrush, you can turn on the stabilized stroke and this will do a nice smooth curve. So this is great for this particular example. Um, that's what I did. I actually had um, this guy, I did uh, the lazy mouse approach um, and I just came in and I just start to draw out my design like this to um, visualize what I wanted to do, right? So that can be pretty handy when it comes to um, actually designing out your objects and everything here. So I definitely would advise that. And the other thing you can also do if you didn't want to work with the remesh is you can use the dyno topo mode as well. And this will effectively um, dynamically change the topology. So depending on the size of the brush, so if we sort of sculpt in um, with a big brush, you'll see that we get um, slightly larger um, topology there. And when we go in uh, with a smaller brush, you'll see that we get um, more dense geometry depending on the size. So that can be pretty handy as well if you're trying to ease, quickly manipulate things. So for the case of this, I didn't really use a whole lot of tools to do that. I was just using the basic tools just to figure out um, how I wanted my designs to work and where I wanted panel lines and, and cuts and things like that. So it's almost like draw, doing a sketch or drawing something out. We're just doing it in 3D. So I'm not worried, worrying too much about um, the sort of topology of this or worrying too much about the quality of it. I'm just using it as a way to draw out my design. So this is definitely something that helped me a lot. So I used the combination of the sculpting technique and the metaballs technique to help me figure out um, my designs when it came to um, actually designing the look of the robot. Okay, so now uh, we've covered a lot of the techniques that I would usually typically use when modeling for the high poly. I'm actually just going to start to detail up a few of these different areas. So um, I'm going to be working with my reference, which is um, of this foot piece here. And oh, I'm going to do, be doing this section that we see here. So one of the things I really liked about this is that they seem to have this really nice kind of socket type piece as the different sections sort of interact with each other. And you see that sometimes there's a little flick underneath or above which kind of sockets it together. And I really liked that overall look. It almost looks like sometimes there's a, a hair or a strand in there as well. And I think that's a really nice aesthetic. So I wanted to try and get that across in the hard surface design a little bit. Um, so we'll be looking at that mostly. And then as we start to detail, we'll be following a similar concept to I mentioned before in this example from uh, Ben Bolton, uh, where we start by just trying to simple shapes to begin with, and then we'll start to actually split and segment pieces into different chunks. And then we'll look at the different surfacing as well and um, how we actually approach edges such as bevels and things like that. So that's my current 
um, sort of plan in terms of detailing up. So let's get started in there. And the first thing I want to do is I want to look at the connection at the end with the claw. So with this piece, uh, we have our claw section kind of coming in. Um, sometimes you would see one claw, sometimes you would see two. And I liked the aesthetic of having two. So that's why I have uh, blocked that out, roughed that out here. But I definitely want to work like I have done here on the connection and how these guys are actually adding in. So the first thing I'm probably going to do here is just add in a cube. So we'll add this guy in and we'll start with our shape. So I went for something that basically it looks like it was slotted into the design kind of underneath. That was the plan that I had there. So um, we can just quickly create this. We'll apply. Okay, so I'm just going to apply uh, one of the materials that we have in here as well. And we're going to put that into zero here. So this is like a section piece that I want to kind of add in there. So I know I want these claws to rotate um, in different directions. So I want to be able to have the option for these to kind of spread apart, but also to rotate kind of up and down as well. So if we just bring our uh, pivot into this guy, we want to be able to let's position our pivot somewhere here. We want this to be able to sort of rotate um, kind of up and down like this. And the axis we don't care about, we can lock as well if we want to just see that rotating. So I usually like to put joints in there and things that kind of look like they would function. Um, so in the case of this, like I would definitely consider just putting a cylinder in here so that we can visualize easily um, how this is going to rotate and everything. So if we put that in there and we'll just copy the materials so we can just start to get this design um, figured out here. So that's looking um, pretty good. And then for this connection to this piece, we want the same kind of idea, but we would want this to be rotated so that it can rotate in the axis that we have. We essentially only want this to be rotating in this kind of axis, right? So something along the lines of here, which is the shape that I ultimately uh, went for in the end. So I just put these kind of things in here. I start to just manipulate the geometry to kind of line up roughly to how I want. Um, and you can just create whatever design you want in here. It doesn't have to be exactly what I'm um, creating. I, I liked to just try to make it feel like there was a, these are socketed pieces that kind of snap together. So um, they kind of line up with each other, something along the lines of this. And then we can just add a symmetry to that. I didn't like when I did this design, I didn't like how it kind of met as a triangle in the middle there. So I ended up sort of pushing this more out along the lines of this. So we get a bit more of a, a socketed piece um, and we can just scale this a little bit as well. So we're just almost blocking out what our shapes and forms are going to be here, right? So you can sort of see how this is coming together. Um, when I did this claw, I actually ended up remaking the claw because just by doing the bevel shape, you just end with a little bit of an unusual uh, shape on the claw there. So um, we can either manipulate the geometry that we have and re-bevel this. That would be one way to approach it. So we could just come in. Um, so sometimes I'll do this. If I'm working with topology, I want to tidy up the visual. I'll just do something along the lines of this. And then if you wanted to um, just come back to Sometimes if you're working at an angle as well, it can be a little bit tricky to work with. So another little tip is to basically duplicate an instance version and then just rotate it back to this orientation. So what we can then do is just work with our local pivot here. So if we jump over to the left view, um, we can do that. So you can sort of see here. Um, I'm trying to basically add some divisions into here so that we can um, basically bevel this how I want to. So I'm just going to bevel this like this and I'm going to choose um, percentage bevel. And so what that will do is it will um, reach the extents of these areas so we can create a nice rounded bevel that's going to actually fit the shape here. So that's sort of what I want to do. And then I'm just going to um, kind of come and sort of get this shape actually how I want it to be. So let's just sort of adjust. So we'll just do something along the lines of this. And then I'm just going to do my percentage bevel. And you'll see that I get a really nice rounded um, shape there. I think I'm going to move this guy down even further. 
So you can see that I'm getting that really nice claw shape now. Um, I actually want to make him a little bit, so I'll just adjust this. I want to make him a bit taller in this particular section here. So now let's try that again and maybe a little bit wider as well. So something more like this. Yeah, he still needs to um, come to a bit more of a point, I think, as well. So I'm just going to tweak the verts here. Great. So yeah, so pretty happy with that. And then what I'll do is the other shapes that we have. In fact, I might just add a few more, undo that and just add a few more divisions to this. Maybe we'll go for around 20. Um, so that's feeling pretty good. And then there's doubled up edges here where we've done the bevel. So what we'll do is we'll just remove those. And you can see now that once we kind of add our um, divisions in there, you can see how this is looking. Um, I want to uh, just flip the mirror as well because we're not actually getting our chamfered edge that we can see in here. Um, you can also see that it's removing the chamfer as we go down a little bit. So we're just going to need to adjust our offset. We could also tweak the size that we have for our merge. That might also fix that issue. Let's see if we can get that. Not sure if it's going to, it is actually going to do it, I think. So let's try. Yeah, we'll just move the pivot a little bit as well. Perfect. Okay. Cool, so that's got our shape kind of roughed in there and we can just then apply our modifiers to that. So we got our smooth result and then we can just delete this. So that's already giving a much better result. And then if I select this area and we'll just, um, we're gonna add a new, um, a new uh, modifier here. So this one we want to basically um, add a new um, mirror. So I'm just gonna duplicate that up and I'm using this as my mirror point. So you can sort of see that there. These guys are merging together. So I'm gonna, again, just increase this merge size and you can see that we're starting to build out our design and our shape. So next up, um, I wanna just work on this little area a little bit more and then I can always come back and uh, tweak these further, but you can see I can get the basics um, of my design kind of roughed in. And then it's always just then a case of detailing up further, basically, when you work on stuff like this. So um, we mirror that. It's causing a little bit of an issue. I think that's also the uh, clipping issue again. And maybe um, just try and tweak these values here. Yeah, I'm not sure why that's um, merging. So I've just turned bisect off. I think that should be good. And then we can just add a, a bevel modifier to this so that we can get nice edges, something like that. Okay, great. And then I'm gonna copy the bevel from here. So we're gonna just copy the modifier. Awesome. Okay, so that's starting to look pretty good so far. We've got that design kind of roughed out. And now in this area, we're gonna hide, um, let's move these ones into our foot design here. And we're just gonna briefly hide um, our foot there. So. I want to basically cut away for this section that we have under here. I want something to be able to connect to the bottom of the foot there. So we could extend this out as well. Maybe we can actually extrude this design into this a little bit more as well, but I want to cut this out. So um, you can definitely just come in with box cutter. Um, I personally kind of like just using boxes and being a little bit more um, s selective with things and then cutting it in. Um, that's just my personal preference. You don't have to work like that. You can also use box cutter as well. Um, but I like to see the geometry first and kind of get it in the position I want. And then I will do my Boolean basically. So here we actually have um, a duplicate version. So if we delete the other version, you can see, um, actually let's delete the one, this one, and then we'll do a Boolean on this. Okay. Cool, so that's our reference. Um, we can also run the quad remesher on these as well if we're gonna work with this stuff a little bit more. But for now, we'll just uh, leave those out of quad remesher and we'll just work with what we have. Um, okay, so now I'm just gonna manipulate the shape 
And I also, in my original design, I had a different material and separated this out. So I'm always looking for opportunities to separate these into different pieces. Um, so it feels like um, they're made of, of, of chunks. It's not all just the same kind of thing there, right? So this could be another good um, example. So we can duplicate this up here and then just run um, a slash command on this one. And then we can do the same thing with our material as we did before, where we set it to object and to the bronze material. So you can see that we can just get a quick uh, material change or tweak in that section. So that's how we're starting to build out the shapes now. Um, for this back part, one of the things I did because I um, was definitely still focusing on the fact that I wanted stuff to feel a bit smaller and um, cuter, as I mentioned before, when I was looking at uh, my references. So we had this kind of idea that things were um, a little bit more smaller and compacted. So I didn't want this bit to be overly complicated or fussy. And when we look at this in the context of the rest of the model, you could kind of see that that starts to get a little bit fussy looking. So one of the things that I did was simplify this into just half the amount of segments. So rather than having four segments, I split it into two segments uh, just to simplify it down basically. Um, so we can easily do that. I actually made these in um, sequential order. They are getting larger as well, which I think is just a nice um, design language um, thing there just to sort of uh, show the importance that as it gets towards the end, it's a more important section. So um, yeah, so definitely just delete these guys. We're just going to remove those and I'm probably going to separate these out now into pieces. So we'll do that. Um, so the first thing is just kind of getting the shape of this correct. So we can just sort of start to move uh, this into a rough uh, shape that like we have in the example there. So just come in here. I'm going to add another division into this. So we're just using um, the subdivision workflow where uh, we model with really simple topology. And then we can actually just manipulate the verts that we have um, and then allow the, the smoothing to smooth the shapes for us. So that's a really nice way to work because it just means that you can rely on the turbo smooth to give you the geometry um, that you need there. So I like working with that uh, particular workflow. And if I'm doing um, this guy, I probably would collapse that down. You can sort of see how we're just building out the shapes there. So, and then we can do, um, what I would probably do here is just quickly copy the, the same shape. So just control L and link this. Um, although actually what would probably be easier is just to uh, shift D and duplicate. And then now I've got a, a duplicate version. I can then just scale this down and adjust um, the size that we have here. So that kind of gets us into the right spot for those pieces. Um, I also wanted them to kind of taper in shape. So we sort of taper these in a little bit on the ends um, so that they kind of feel like they meet with each other. And trying to get that overlap that you can see in the reference that I had before. So if I jump over back over to where I have my reference, these guys, they kind of taper to a point. I will try and find a good example of it. It's, sometimes it's hard to see with this kind of reference, but you notice that they have this kind of point that they come to. So I tried to get that feeling here by just moving um, these verts kind of outwards a little bit. So it feels like it comes more towards um, a point. So I'm effectively just manipulating the shapes here. So that's how um, we get the general form to be looking pretty good. And now it's just a case of basically detailing further. We can rely on our crease sets if we want to um, just remove ones we can as well. We can just come in um, and recrease those and you'll see that we get smoother results. So this is um, just useful if you're trying to hold certain edges or you want certain bits to be um, a bit sharper, then you can obviously use the crease sets to do that. So yeah, I don't really, I want this to be pretty organic and we can up the subdivision a bit as well. So we can see this, how it's going to sort of smooth out, right? Um, same process with this one. So you just come in and then we'll just um, select the ones where we have creases that I don't want creases on and just kill those creases, right? Okay, so that's looking pretty good as far as shape is concerned. I definitely want to get something in there for connection. So you can see that I built out this idea of 
how these would actually look if they were going to be moving and rotating. Um, so to do that was really straightforward. I just basically made another smaller shape. So with this, I think I started with a cylinder. So we can just come in here and do that. We come from the left hand view there and we'll add in our, um, actually let's do it from the add menu. We'll add in our cylinder um, and I want this to be if we just turn on auto axis, this should hopefully give us the right axis there. Okay, cool. So now we can move this in and we'll just scale him up. So we had two pieces. We have a cylinder for the previous one to connect to. And then we have this other one where it kind of connects over the top. So for that one, we'll use the cylinder. And then for the other one, um, I think I'll probably go for a box style cube. And I'm going to put that in. And we'll just scale this. I like to always remember to just move these pieces back as well into the center, which will just save us having to um, apply any symmetry to that as well. So, yeah, so we can just kind of start to block that out. And we applied, I applied different materials to these connection pieces as well. So I actually use the brass material for those. Um, and you can sort of see that there. We we're just trying to get this design kind of figured out and then to sort of pull these back a little bit as well so we can start to see that chunk coming through and I'm going to move this one into here as well and then what I like to do with this is I like to just cut the cylinder in half so we'll just add some divisions there and then we can just select the pieces and just remove them and then I will just extrude those out and cap the ends. So that gives us our section that kind of connects up to the section here, right? Um, so you can take a look at the, the reference that we're aiming for. So you can sort of see how that is this piece that we have there. For this one, um, I think actually, because this is more, I built this out as a, a cylindrical shape or a sphere type shape that then turns into more of a square so that we could actually it feels like it sockets into the back here. So maybe starting with a cube isn't the best idea, but we could just manipulate this by kind of beveling it as well. So if we were to do um, a bevel here, we can press C to clamp this, and this is going to give us like a nice rounded bevel here. So something along the lines of this. Um, we'll probably go for maybe 10 divisions there. And then I'm going to also bevel this side. Um, for this one, actually, I want to make sure I just merge my verts together before I do that. So we'll just bevel this out. And I think because this is set to the percentage, it's not giving us a great result. So let's try that. Um, and then I think as well, this is um, giving us a weird result because our scale is odd here. So what we'll do is we'll just hit apply scale and we'll bevel again. And now you can see that we're creating this nice rounded shape which is basically going to sit into this socket here so we could then pull this forward a little bit and you can see that it kind of sits in there um these guys like just take a little bit of massaging to get to sit into the right place so you can just sort of pull that back a little bit and try to get it to sit there and then this one can kind of manipulate and just sort of pull into the right spot yeah, and then it's just about adjusting these different sections that we have. So I'm actually going to pull this one forward a little bit as well. And these have some um, these have some creases that I also don't want. So while I'm there, I'll just uh, tidy up those creases and we'll just move this forward a little bit. This can be a little bit finicky because of the, um, the Boolean operation there, but you can sort of see how this is coming together. So... Yeah, so we got all those sections working. This guy is looking a bit weird from a shading perspective, so I'm just going to run a sharpen on it, and it's going to smooth out those areas. And then for this guy, I just want to make sure that everything is in the middle. I think this one might not be in the middle, so we'll just kind of hide some of these. So that one looks like it is. I think it's actually... The thing that's throwing me off is actually the um, Boolean not being in the middle, so let me just make sure that definitely is in the middle. And if you experience issues uh, like this, then it's definitely worth um, just making sure that these are still linked. So we can do that there. 
Okay, and then I want to ensure that this is the right material as well. So we'll just go to object. Okay, great. And now I'm just going to, I've just, I just finished ad um, adjusting this, but we're just going to need to go back and tweak that again because um, I've overridden it. So let's go through there. Okay, so now I'm, I'm pretty happy with how those things are interacting and coming together now. Um, and then it's just a, a repeating the process. So with these guys, I actually want to use the same um, chunk, like the same section. I don't want to have to make another new piece for the way that these connect. So if I can do it in such a way where they feel like they are being reused without being super obvious, then I will. Um, so in this case, we're just going to take these pieces and, and basically make sure we have global pivot and move them back so that we also have a connection um, for this one. We're probably going to need to adjust our shape slightly to accommodate for that though. So let's just do kind of something like this. Okay, great. Uh, this one can also be scaled down a little bit as well because this piece is getting smaller. So if we scale it, then um, it will fit a little bit more naturally. So this is already giving us the right kind of feel straight away, which is great. So we're get definitely getting into a good spot there. Um, the only thing I want to do now before I show my process for detailing or a detailing pass is just to split these out into separate pieces. So we've already covered how to do that with the Boolean workflow, but essentially we're just going to do the same thing as before. We're going to add um, a cube in here and just draw that out so we get our shape. And then we'll just apply a slash to this and we'll override the material. You can always come back and tweak the shapes of these as well later on. So um, yeah, we'll duplicate this one, do the same for this guy. So slash and apply the material. Okay. So yeah, now we're in a pretty good um, place for sort of the next stage, which is once we've got most of our forms kind of figured out and the design figured out, we can then start to do secondary and tertiary detail paths. So you can see that we've got a lot of the elements figured out. And if we look at this as well in our actual design, we can start to see how this is actually coming across and how this is looking with everything else that's going on there. So um, next we'll just do a detail pass. Okay, so for secondary detail and uh, detailing pass in general, <clears throat> I'm trying to think about how things would functionally uh, sit together and trying to add detail to stuff that makes sense, but is also grabbing the attention and working from smaller, um, from larger shapes down to smaller shapes. So. Um, in the case of this one, all I wanted to do was basically uh, try to add connections to things. So you can see here in this section, we try to um, add connections to parts and we add um, screw bolts and um, different types of details there. So um, again, process is very similar to what we've already covered. So if we were starting to add some further detail to this, we could just kind of come in here and um, start adding some stuff here. So I'm just going to try and get a slightly smaller detail there and we'll adjust our bevel size as well. Um, and then I'm just going to sort of model in some actual detail to this. Okay, let's just sort of get something that is vaguely representative of the type of detail I want to go for. So this is just to sort of show a bit of a connection to things like they feel like they're working together, which is cool. Um, and we'll just add in, um, let's change the material as well. We'll just get a bit more readable. Um, and then I want these guys to feel like they connect. So we add in um, some divisions to this as well. So a quick way to do that would just be, so then I'm just going to add in a, a cube into here and we'll just, um, create that shape and then I'm just going to use this to basically boolean out um, my section here. Okay, so we now cut this um, section out, which is cool. So now we can see through to that. And then I want to add um, more of a connection for, for these guys. So we can just start to kind of come into here and adjust our bevel sizes a little bit as well. Um, great. <clears throat> So then um, it'd be nice to sort of think about the shapes that we have here. So I'm going to grab, let's just do this. 
I want to try to add um, some sort of connection between the two of these so it looks like it would actually uh, function and work. So um, in this area, I probably just would quickly add a solidify to this and I'm going to uh, select, let's just do this and remove those sections. just as allowing us to basically connect some pieces there i think let's just try and get the pivot into the right place there okay then now we should be able to just extrude these out so at the very least these feel like they kind of connect to each other which is cool and then we can link these materials together and we also have our um, sort of connect these as well. So the process just becomes very um, repetitive at this point. You're essentially just adding detail to things, um, continuing to add detail to stuff. So we just start to bevel out our shapes um, and then we try to add smaller and smaller details in here. So we're just adding bevels defining the shapes um, and then adding smaller details as we go. So things like screw bolts and, and that kind of stuff as, as we move forward. Um, I'll just get rid of the bisect on that and oops, there we go. Cool. And then this one I'm going to also bevel as well. I kind of want to make sure that this is a bit more, feels like it's connected a little bit more, which is good. And then for this one, um, I want to just make these, let's just play around with this a little bit more. Uh, okay, so I'm just going to move this vertice out the way. Okay, and then I also, I'm going to turn off the loop slide. Sometimes this creates weird geometry, so I like to just, yeah, try and tidy that up a little bit. So you can see that this is definitely now feeling a little bit more like it's actually connected to things, which is cool. Um, and we can start to add just defining more detail as we go. So similar to what we have here, we can start to kind of cut some shapes in and extrude those in. So they feel like there's a bit more of a connection to this, right? We can always just um, do another mirror as well. I think this is needs to be moved in a little bit there. So I check the rotations on this as well. I think it should be rotated to five degree increment there, so it lines up a bit nicer. Okay, great. And then as we have other pieces like these kind of sections that we have in here as well, um, I like to try and add connection points to them so they feel like they're bolted together or fixed together in some fashion, right? So in this case, um, we can just add more smaller pieces into this and start to kind of cut away, boolean out these shapes and get some um, get some more interest, right? So we can start to do this. And then this one I would run, just for previewing purposes, you can run the quad remesher on and get some nice smooth topology on there. Um, let's pull back this one as well. So I'm just adding smaller little latchy type details where this might have, where there's a connection in there. So if you wanted to separate these pieces out, you could also add smaller screw bolts and holes and things as you go. So that's kind of how I'm starting to detail these out. For this one that we have here, um, I wanted to basically have this feel like it connects. So to do that, we'll just quickly cover that as well. Just to zoom in on this. So I um, first, added a shape to this we can just use that again as a boolean style uh, shape so we'll do this guy like this so this is helpful for just making it feel it's going to feel a bit thinner there now and it means that it will look like it kind of connects up basically uh, which is good and then if we need to kind of optimize this geo a little bit we can also do that um, what we can collapse some of these things that we've created down so that it's a bit easier to work with. So um, we'll cut these in and then we'll do that. So um, let's just 
try and get this in the right place first. Sometimes switching between exact and fast booleans can help you if you're running into the booleans not actually sorting correctly. So um, yeah, I'm just kind of optimizing that geometry, which is looking pretty good. Um, I want to kind of bevel this end section. So we're just going to smooth that out. Okay, great. And then I can now uh, grab this and just shift him back a little bit as well. And then for this, we're just going to adjust what we have here in terms of our shape slightly. Okay, cool. And then wherever I have things kind of connecting, I always want to make that feel like um, it doesn't just jam into each other. Like in this case, you can see it kind of feels like it just jams together. It doesn't really look like it makes a whole lot of sense. So I usually will just try to cut the shapes together. So in this case as well, we could just come in here with a Boolean and this is going to cause us issues. We can just set that to um, an exact Boolean there and we can just move this kind of in and we'll move this down as well. So yeah, you can sort of see that that's now creating that, but there is a hole in there. So let's try and figure out why that is. I think it's probably due to the fact that Sometimes, again, switching between these can be helpful. So switching back to fast can actually fix the hole in this case. Um, yeah, great. So now um, just sort of move this again into the center. Might have to do the same thing again, switch it back between the two. So sometimes, um, depending on where this is located, it can cause issues. So we're just trying to create some nice um, stuff going on there. Probably just going to um, scale this out a bit. Okay, cool. Yeah, and then the other thing I wanted to do is because this can be sort of hard to read in the example I had here, I kind of flow those two shapes into each other um, just so that it feels like it connects on the top a lot closer, right? So we just do something like this. Um, you could do the same for the bottom as well, um, depending on the shape that we have at the bottom. I think in my version here, I actually kind of bend the shape kind of upwards a little bit. So we kind of do more of this kind of thing. So it feels like it has a bit more of a, a, a shape to it, right? But yeah, we can just come in with this and start to smooth out and bevel those shapes. So it's looking pretty good. I'm just gonna clear all the sharpness of those sections. Okay, and now we can add um, a bevel to this as well. Can look at with this one because we're cutting some really tricky shapes in here if we try to add a bevel to this it's probably not going to work super well here you can sort of see the issues there so we have a couple of options we could collapse the geometry down and clean it up um, but for the sake of uh, previewing this um, we can always do that kind of later on as we build out our final mesh um, so for the sake of this example what i will probably do um, and, and for the for sort of time sake as well, I would just run a, a remesh on this. And now we can just run a nice smooth and you can see we can get pretty reliable result on that type of stuff uh, straight away. So that's a good way to sort of preview things. Um, not sure what this shape, I think when I've reset the scale, that's caused this issue. So let's just uh, relink. Um, actually, no, sorry. I just need to reset the scale. There we go. Uh, cool. So that's kind of given us that and then we can reuse some of the elements that we have here. So if we turn on the face snap and just align this to here, if you do align to rotation to target, um, what that should also do is rotate it the right orientation. Um, it's not actually in this case, it's not working, I think, because I've locked the rotation there. So if I unlock the rotation, um, we could also just kind of manually put this in. So I'm going to put in 90 degrees to kind of get this exact. Um, but that's helping to give us that connect, again, that connection point that we have here. Um, we probably want to change the material so that it doesn't um, stand out so much as well. So we'll just link those together. So now you can start to see how we're, we're approaching that. Um, when we've moved that, we've actually deleted this one. So we'll just undo that. And I just want to duplicate it when I do it. So. Um, I think I forgot to press duplicate on that. So 
just kind of get our rotation back where we were. So apologies for that. Let me just get it into a good spot. And then we can just link our material. That might change the material for this one, but in this case it hasn't, so that's pretty good. So yeah, you can sort of see how the process goes. We'll do this last sphere as a as a detail pass, but essentially the process is just going to be the same thing um, repeated. You're effectively cutting away details, adding in small bolts and rivets and holes. Um, for this one, I wanted to s segment up the sphere a little bit. So um, one of the things I would do here is potentially just kind of extrude out a few sections. So we'll just kind of come in um, to this area here and I'm just going to push this out a little bit, extrude it kind of in a little bit there. Um, I think actually I'm going to tweak it slightly. Let me try and something a bit like that. So it's just giving it a shape and um, some sort of definition to it here. And then we can kind of come in on the end piece um, and we'll model in a little bit more of a design into there as well. So I'm going to add in that guy, um, a handy little add on as well. It's called set flow. So if you're trying to add more divisions to something that's more cylindrical, you can just right click this and it's going to basically smooth that section out. So that can be pretty handy as well. And we'll just sort of push that one out. Just playing with the shapes here a little bit. So you can do whatever design um, you kind of want in here. I'm just basically playing um, with some of the shapes here and trying to get something that could look particularly interesting. And then you can always just add a bit of a bevel to this to kind of smooth out some of those edges. Let's just mirror that as well. And um, putting in extra materials in here as well can always be a, a really nice way to go. Um, so if you wanted to just extrude out um, a section here and then assign a different material, you can come to the material tab, add a material and we'll just assign that to that section. So that's a good way to kind of detail out um, different areas there. Uh, we can also uh, try and build out a few more shapes here. So one of the things I wanted to do was just try and basically just push that bit out. So we get, it creates like a cut like we have in the example here. So something similar um, to that. Um, cool. Okay. Yeah. So that sort of gives us um, something a bit more interesting there. But as you can see, we're going through that process of just basically detailing out um, different areas. So um, we would just kind of repeat that process. As I said, we would add more screw bolts. We would detail up all the different sections and get it to um, a nice detailed look um, similar to the sort of final result there. So we can um, get something that's working pretty nicely. All right, so um, you made it to the end of the uh, second series here. We've been focusing on high poly modeling um, or modeling out our um, high detailed mesh for the robot. So um, in the sessions, we went over um, a recap of where we were up to so far, focusing on um, moving on from the block out into actually detailing up our meshes. We covered some of the adjustments that we actually made to the meshes, including um, scaling up the asset and applying materials and tweaking the overall silhouettes using lattices. Um, then we covered the techniques that I would approach when I'm actually modeling something like this, um, what modeling techniques I'd use and also what techniques I could use to design shapes I was unsure about. So we covered uh, things like booleans and remeshing and um, subdiv workflows and all those kind of approaches. Um, and then we also covered metaballs and sculpting when it comes to actually designing shapes in 3D as well. And then finally, to finish off, uh, we approached the showed the workflow in practice. We went through how to actually model the foot section and how we start um, cutting in different shapes and designing different areas, making sure things feel functional before then starting to detail past everything um, as well. So that's the process that we follow. And then um, that process can be applied directly to the other portions of the feet as well, or the other portions of the leg, I should say. As far as um, homework is concerned for this week, the expectation is just a finished model for the leg portion. 
Um, you can make adjustments to your um, main actual design as well. So if I jump back over into our uh, file here, you can make the lattice adjustments and things into uh, the main beetle block out. And it would be great as well if you can see the leg design implemented into the actual um, part of the mech as well. That's definitely very helpful to see. And if you want to see all the pieces, you can just basically add collection instances and just offset them. So um, if you wanted to preview that, we can see we have our different pieces. So essentially, you would just come into collection instances and add uh, the FEMA in. And then you can just duplicate this out um, and then swap this out for the next piece. So we'll go for the tibia next and then um, do the foot after that. So that's a just really quick way to so you can actually see how the leg is all coming together. Um, just place that maybe in another collection and you can then um, just sort of see all the pieces being um, placed like this. So when you're working, you can get the update of the leg um, and also you'll see it on the robot as well. So yeah, that's the idea behind this week. I hope that makes sense. Um, if you have any questions, just let us know, but um, that would be the approach. So I'm looking for a final leg design uh, for this week as part of the homework. So if you picked a different animal to create your robot this week, I just wanted to cover my expectation for the homework. So choosing some of the examples I provided from the um, first series here, um, if we were picking something like a manta ray, I would just focus on limbs. So potentially um, look at something like doing the wing portion of one of these designs. That's probably going to be um, enough to kind of keep you going for the uh, second series here. Um, if you were focusing may maybe more on something like a crab, again, if you've got, say, tracks or guns or something like that in your design, um, just pick a portion of it. So maybe in this case, we could just pick uh, the track section and then we would keep the body and the gun more as a block out and do those um, in the upcoming week. So um, yeah, that would be what I would say here. And then if we've gone for something more complex like uh, the wasp or bee design. Again, I think you can pick a limb. So here we have the body and the back section as well. You could pick, say, uh, these limbs or whatever, this particular portion of detailing those up to uh, creating the high poly. So I think it's uh, transferable for this week.